Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 32, Intro to Jitter. Yes, more of the at op object. You may have remember you may remember from last week we made this lovely um, matrix filler, and when you turn the metronome on, it does this. Because while it's busy counting, it's um, running, I guess better zoom out here, it's uh, A running this number up and down between uh, 0 and 255 and B this counter is doing um, what would you call them? Columns and rows or rows and columns, I can never keep them straight doesn't matter, X then Y um, and I thought it might be interesting to sort of um, just take this and kind of screw around with it and uh, use the uh, at op object again. So let's uh, turn this metronome off. Let's rename Frank because, um, well I'll, I'll show you a, a quick little trick by uh, going off my screen over here and doing this and then which is that you'll really screw things up if you don't rename them. So if you look closely at this, it's really messing itself up right now because as it turns out, I have two versions of this patcher and I noticed before that if they're both running, and this one is right now, because they have the same name, they really mess up their, their um, matrices. So one's running vertically and the other's running horizontally. I'm going to turn this one off and uh, get it out of here again. And then this one will once again take over. So that's a good lesson. So let's just uh, uh, rename. Well, let's shut this thing off. And for the purposes of what we're going to work on today, um, we're going to rename. Sorry, not unlocked. We're going to rename this one red and it'll give you an idea of where we're headed here. Red, and we're going to make it a four-plane matrix, and uh, just so I can make things run up and down and side to side easily, I'm going to make it 20 by 20. Okay, And knowing that we're doing that, we'll uh, attempt to make this slightly more square looking so that the pixels are a little more square you know, 20 by 20 after all, right? And then, um, let's, uh, so we're going to need to count up to 20, or actually up to 21 is always nice, because then it, <laughs> then it has the effect of going off the end, and it never makes those nasty extra pixels, uh, where it jumps kind of sideways. And let's see, what else do we need to do? Ah! because, we'll get a really tight zoom on this, because this is a four plane matrix we can't just set a value of string one but rather what we want to do is set a value of zero space string one space zero space oops that was two spaces zero space zero and the reason for that is this is alpha then red then green, then blue. Okay, so now we're going to have it just set whatever string one is, which is uh, the value that's coming in here from this slider in here. That'll be the first message in string one. We're going to have that run the red. Um, we also notice that this counter is running through modulo, which leaves a remainder and since it's going to do 20 now, we're going to set that to 20. So it's always going to divide by 20, give us a number, spit it out here, and this thing will go brum 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 every time it'll return after 20, or so we hope. So uh, uh, let's see if we remember to do everything here. I'll just uh, lock it down and hit the go button. And, uh, and see how it works. 
You know, the other thing we could do is turn the counter up a little bit so it goes faster. Because who can sit around and wait for all this stuff to happen? There we go, 50. And I've noticed sometimes Metro won't change unless you turn it off and turn it on again. There we go. Now it's flying. So... 20255. Five. Okay, that's counting up and down. And then 0 to 21. Look at it go. Beautiful! All right, so let's take all this junk and um, take a moment here, take a deep breath, and we'll do a little tiny bit of spring cleaning uh, with your patcher unlocked. Just try to stick all this stuff in as tight a vertical stack as uh, you can. So what I really mean is like by doing this. We could even actually just well, no, we, we want to duplicate it, so. Okay, and then we'll move uh, this over here, and this over here, and this over here. And we'll probably mess around with these soon, but not just yet, so. There we go. Okay. So there it is. You can probably see it all coming now. Essentially what we're going to do is copy everything, because we like doing that and we'll copy it once and we'll copy it again okay and now before we forget to do it come over here and change the name of this thing or you'll be sorry so let's change this one to green and this one over here to blue and we will try to give them things to do, these uh, red, green, and blue. So in this one, now we were changing the red in the last one, which we know is the second one. Now we're going to turn this to a zero and the next one to a string one because it goes alpha, red, green, blue. And so over here it's again alpha, red, we're going to want that to be a zero green we want that to be a zero and string one at the end so we'll get rid of this string one and change it to a zero and then put string one here very good um, and we've already set all these things to 20 percent but let's see um, since we really don't want to have them all, all doing the same thing all the same time First, we'll change this to a number that is no, in no way affiliated with the number 50. So let's say the number 82. So it'll run at a different speed. It will count uh, backwards if we add a 1 here. And if we switch our X and Y, it should run vertically instead of horizontally. Do we really think this is going to work? I don't know. We'll just tell it to route this one. There we go. Okay. Uh, I can't remember. Let's see what happens. Uh, lock it and hit it. No, or maybe this is a pretty low number here. What did I do wrong? Uh, this is oh, look, look, look at that going, but it's not advancing for some reason because it's counting downward and it's not reaching a maximum. Okay, I can live with that. These these subtle things that you never realize. We'll just get rid of that and see what it does now. There we go. Okay, I can, I can, I can live with that. All right. Moving over here to blue. Um, let's just go off the deep end and explore the plot, the, the, the possibilities of random numbers. Um, so let's type new and random. Uh, obviously, we're only going to want to go up to twenty. And one of the things that we know about the random uh, object is that it can't accept a number in this side. And if it 
has a number going this side, it will reset the number range. So what we want to do is put a bang, otherwise known as a button, on there. Type the letter B and put a button on there. And we'll just take the output from here. Run that to the button and take this lovely patch cord and move it over here. There we go. And uh, you know we can do that for the X as well as the Y. So let's uh, copy this, this random with its button, both of them. Move them over here. Click on eh, that patch cord. Come on patch cord. You can't get it. There it is. Here I'll do it the other way around. Onto the you know, sometimes it's better to just delete them and start over. A patch cord from the bottom of that number to the button. There's random to 20. Okay, so we should have, and then these are actually, we don't need them anymore. So we can tuck these in. And, <laughs> and reroute at least that patch cord. Okay, and do we think it'll work? Let's change the number on this one too and make it go super fast. 20, 20, 20? Oops, space, 20. Okay, this might be a little distracting, but let's see. There we go. Oops. So we have our three windows now just burning it up. And uh, doing their own thing. Fantastic. So uh, I think we could just encapsulate them and get them out of the way. And just leave the on buttons, which sounds good to me. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, we could don't have to, but encapsulate shift can shift command E, and there it is. Our more or less. Okay. How come everybody stopped? What's going on? They're just not. I think they might actually be running. It might have reset everything to put it inside a patcher. So we'll uh, make sure everybody's running here. Fantastic. Everything running. Everything good. Okay, it's running. They're running. And then we'll um, unlock the patcher and just name it patcher uh, three color. There we go. Okay, patcher three color. Okay. So, um, in order to learn a little bit about our uh, at op object, let's pull one up, call it n j i t period o p space the at symbol and op and then we can put well as we had done before plus space plus space plus and um, Put that up here, and we'll run green to it. Then we'll need another one of these, so I'm just going to copy one and pull it down. And 
Okay, so here's what we have now. Um, if we're just adding things together, and since we're uh, doing this here, why don't we just uh, ay, 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 ay. Sometimes they're just too sensitive. There we go. So we'll run one over here that's got the, oops, I'll do it that way. Okay, so um, obviously, Um, this one is combining the red and the green and you can see the lovely colors it's making here and you could put adjustments on the speed and the pixel size and all that sort of thing and another thing you could do is um, pull up your friend the attribute um, the attribute object by typing you know I'm sorry I get I so used to thinking that you can remember to do this. Type N, type A, T, T, R, and there's the attrui attribute thingamajig, and as soon as you hook it to the JIT op, you'll get lots of, whoops, as soon as you lock it down, you'll get lots of um, possibilities here. Um, obviously we're going to be using the um, op, but I think you could also uh, no, it's filling it. I guess you have to go in there and manually change those. I thought I could change that with the, the uh, truey object. And dimension blah 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 into to name into blah 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 plain count type. No. Well, I'm gonna let that one sit. Just because this video has gone on for so long, we're just going to... So we have to change these manually, or at least until I uh, remember how to do it automatically. And we can also uh, do other things with them, as mentioned in the last uh, video, which is we can change the way they interact with each other. Um, obviously, the green is not affecting the red much in the modulo fashion. Let's see if we can get something more like uh, uh, multiply or multiply space, multiply space, multiply space, which is really asterisk space. At, uh, <laughs> here's a funny one, which I hadn't of course thought of, which is <clears throat> um, multiplying them you're multiplying one plane which is red the values times the red plane in the green so no matter what you do you're going to get zero so multiplying is not a good way to go here um, we could you can obviously you can add them together you can possibly subtract them and are we getting any green or not Well, and there's some others. I liked the absolute difference one. The problem is, that, yeah, I guess you could average them and then they'll both be dull. They're on separate planes, so you don't want to do stuff that, that's relying on two values because one of the values is going to be zero. So here's the average. Obviously, the plus one was working a little bit more in a more kind of exciting fashion. And then um, I imagine that our uh, absolute difference might work here. Oops. I'm just 
just going to copy it because I'm too lazy to type it three times in a row. There we go. So that's a, a couple different ways to get um, different results out of them. And now you could do one of two things to get all three together. You could simply combine, whoops, that's not the option key. There's the option key. Um, you could take the output of this one and run it over here. And you could take the output of this one and run it over here. And then you get all three, but um, you could also uh, take the shortcut and simply run the output of this one instead of green. Uh, oh, okay, I'll do it. I love trying to explain stuff like this. Um, you can also just take this one and hook it directly to the output of this one, like so. And that's another way to get all three of them together. Now, I've, whoops, it didn't hook to the right thing. Mm, there we go. OK, route yourself. There you go. Um, so now we have these two. We have red and green run together into this one, mix together, and come out, and then mix with the blue one. And um, then we get uh, this as a, as a combination of them. I think we would say that now the blue is feeding back, so we're getting an extra strong blue down here because it's already mixing with the other one up here here comes the blue, it's coming out, and then it's going in down here again after it's mixed with these. Anyway, um, so that's a couple different ways that you can use uh, the JIT op to uh, mix together the matrices that you're using. And um, I encourage you to uh, uh, help click on these I'm going to zoom out a little here and look at the operators and just try operators that you think are going to be interesting. Actually, this is a good one. Um, I'm going to zoom in um, where it says if you put a an exclamation point in first, then it flips the right and the left. And you probably noticed that in some cases the left is more dominant. For example, here um, we're feeding this grid right here, so I'll just move over here. I'm going to get rid of this one. Um, where was it? It came from here. There we go. Okay. Um, you notice that sometimes, not when you're using average, but when you're using um, uh, divided, let's say. Divide, space. Oh, you can't divide by zero. What am I thinking? Uh, let's say absolute difference. that they don't always end up looking like they're, they're even the way they affect each other. And so I think generally you can, and I'm putting, I'm getting ready to make a fool of myself here, but I think you can often do this, which, which flips the input and output side. So it's as though this one were coming in the right side and this one were coming in the left side. And no, 
it's not accepting that. I think maybe you can only do that with numerical operators like uh, minus and stuff like that, which we already know is not going to work with this. So um, we'll just uh, confine ourselves to uh, averages. Which is interesting because you can only you can put in one average and it'll average all of them as well. I guess if you wanted to, you could say plus and abs difference, and then it treats all the planes differently. So you can keep getting different effects by changing the operators on each of the three color planes, and. Um, with a, without uh, going on for too long, you can just keep uh, shifting them around until you find something that's working for you. But this is just kind of an idea of how you can combine matrices together and get, you know, outputs that um, that sort of fuse the colors together. So that's it for today, and uh, I'll catch you next time on the next video tutorial. Be well.